Hi, I'm Tara Cordy Simpson, and welcome to the Biology 12 video on the secretatory pathway and intracellular digestion in the cell. I'm just going to grab my pen here before we get started. So some of the key ideas that we're going to be talking about today is describing what car compartmentalization is, as well as how the cell uses compartmentalization to carry out two processes in the eukaryotic cell, the secretatory pathway as well as intracellular digestion. Now before we get started on the video and doing our learning, there's a couple of vocabulary words I'd like to go over with you guys just to ensure that um, you have a great under you understand these words before we get started. So the first word is compartmentalization. The definition of compartmentalization is separating into distinct parts, i.e. the membrane-bound organelles, such as the nucleus, ER, Golgi body, separate the functions of the cell into distinct areas of the cell. Next, the secretatory pathway is the route that secretatory pro products follow as they're being prepared and secreted by the cell. Next, intracellular digestion is when food is digested in the cell. So intra means inside and cellular means the cell. So that's how you know how you can dissect what this word means by just looking at the prefix and the root word of the cell. And finally, the membrane bound organelles involved in these processes are the smooth ER, the rough ER, vesicles, lysosomes, and the Golgi body. The Golgi body also has two other names. It can be referred to as the Golgi apparatus or the Golgi complex. So let's begin with learning about compartmentalization. Compartmentalization can be defined as separating one large thing into distinct parts. In biology, compartmentalization refers to a eukaryotic cell having many organelles that are each bound by a membrane. So in other words, by enclosing each organelle with a membrane, the cell is creating a room where a specific function can be carried out without interference by any other activities or reactions occurring at the same time in the cell. Compartmentalization allows for many cell activities to occur simultaneously. Some examples of cell activities would be the synthesis of protein at the ribosomes, and the ribosomes are the little dots here on the rough ER. They create proteins. Another activity would be replicating or making copies of DNA in the nucleus. Another activity would be creating energy at the mitochondria through cellular respiration. But today we're going to be focusing on the activities of the secretatory pathway as well as intracellular digestion. Now let's look at how the cell uses compartmentalization in the secretatory pathway of the cell. Substances are produced, which means created or synthesized, that need to be either A, transported to various areas in the cell, or exported out of the cell, which is called exocytosis. The secretatory pathway allows the cell to transport these substances. So there are four main, me four main membrane-bound organelles that work together to create a secretatory pathway for the cell, a way to export substances out of the cell or to other areas of the cell. The endoplasmic reticulum, which is number five in this diagram, right over here, so all this here is the endoplasmic reticulum. Um, and you can see that the rough ER has all the ribosomes dotted all over it, is connected to the smooth ER here. In some cells diagrams, they are connected together. In other cell diagrams, they are actually separate entities. The next organelle that's involved in this process is the vesicle, which is number four in this diagram. And the vesicle 
can have many different functions. So it can be a transition vesicle, a secretory vesicle. A vesicle can um, also carry food. Um, in some cases, the vacuole here is actually a type of vesicle. The other membrane-bound organelle that is going to be part of this process is the Golgi body, number six. So number six is the Golgi body in this diagram. And finally, the fourth membrane-bound membrane -bound organelle that we're going to talk about today is the lysosome, which is number 12 in this diagram, which is involved in the secretory pathway. Now the lysosome contains digestive enzymes that can digest food in food vacuoles or destroy bacteria, as well as destroy parts of the cell that need to be broken down into smaller molecules. The secretory pathway all begins with endoplasmic reticulum. The endoplasmic reticulum, or ER, in the cell is similar to a transportation system in a city. It transports things to different areas. Ribosomes on the rough ER create or synthesize, synthesize proteins. The proteins then enter into the intramembrous space in the rough ER. In summary, the rough ER constantly needs to send away or ship out these proteins to make space for the incoming proteins. The smooth ER contains enzymes that, need to, that are needed to create biomolecules needed in the cell and the body. The smooth ER also removes toxins from the cytoplasm. So in summary, the smooth ER needs to send away or ship out these biochemicals or toxins to make space for more biochemicals to be created or produced or more incoming toxins from the cytoplasm. This is a diagram of the secretory pathway within a cell. Here is the cell membrane of the cell all the way along here. The cell membrane can also be referred to as the plasma membrane. Let's begin with the rough ER. Now the rough ER here is dotted with ribosomes. The ribosomes produce proteins which then enter into the inside of the intramembrous space here of the rough ER and eventually once enough of them build up they need to be exported out of the rough ER. So then a process called blebbing actually forms a transition vesicle with the proteins inside. The transition vesicle then carries the proteins to the Golgi body. In the Golgi body the proteins are processed and then they can be sent to two different places. The first place that it can be sent is for export out of the cell. And in that case, they would be packaged into a secretory vesicle. And then they would, the secretory vesicle would fuse with the cell membrane or the plasma membrane and release the proteins in outside of the cell through a process called exocytosis. So that is one pathway of the secretory pathway for proteins. However, some of the proteins from the rough ER are going to be repackaged and as digestive enzymes and end up in a lysosome. And the lysosome can then be used to digest food. So that's what ha the secretory pathway of the rough ER. Let's take a look at the smooth ER and how things are secreted from the smooth ER and packaged. So remember the smooth ER creates biochemicals as well as toxins from the cytoplasm and both these things need to be shipped separately to the Golgi body. So let's imagine that we have some toxins inside of this vesicle that is forming here. The toxins then move the transition vesicle down to the Golgi body. In the Golgi body they are repackaged into a secretory vesicle and then the secretory vesicle then will ship them outside of the cell through exocytosis. Some of the biochemicals may also be repackaged into a transition vesicle to be carried somewhere else in the cell for use by a different organelle. Okay, I'm just gonna pull up my script again here. 
I think that brings us to the end of the secretatory pathway, because that explains how substances exit the cell. But let's take a look at how some substances enter the cell. And that's where intracellular digestion comes in. So intracellular digestion explains how food can enter a cell. Um, intracellular digestion is used by unicellular organisms that have no digestion system to break down food into simple molecules. Intracellular digestion is also used by multicellular organisms, such as humans, to break down bacteria that invade the body, to break down cell parts that are no longer needed into smaller molecules that can be used to build something else with the cell. Now the membrane-bound organelles involved in intracellular digestion is the vacuole, number 10, and the vacuole is actually a type of vesicle, and it can carry food in um, a eukaryotic animal cell. And the lysosome, number 12, as we said before, carries the digestive enzymes. Now here is a diagram of intracellular respiration. So let's begin on the outside of the cell membrane here. And you can see here, these are some food particles that are going to be brought into the cell. When particles from the outside of the cell are brought into the inside by the cell membrane blebbing off, here it's called endocytosis. So the food particles then enter a food vacuole and they're inside the cell. Now we have these food bits, but they're not broken down into the smallest molecules, such as glucose that the cell needs in order to be able to use them. That's where the lysosome comes in. The lysosome is full of the digestive enzymes. So the lysosome and the food vacuole fuse together to form one large membrane-bound organelle. Then what happens is the digestive enzymes break down the food molecules into smaller molecules, such as uh, glucose, that can then be released into the cell. The glucose could then travel over to the mitochondria and be used for cellular respiration. So let's review um, the key ideas as we're at the end of the lesson. Compartmentalization allows the eukaryotic cell to carry out many activities in the cell at one time, such as the secretory pathway and intracellular digestion. The ER, Golgi body, vesicles and lysosomes interact to form the endomembrane system, which creates the secretory pathway and carries out intracellular digestion. So that's it for the secretory pathway and intracellular digestion. Thanks for watching.